Hi everyone, uh, this is a, a topic that I've addressed before on my channel, various videos, but it's always good to bring it up again when the need arises. And uh, what really inspired me to do this was that I picked up this uh, CD, double CD, uh, which also has a DVD in it. So it's two CDs plus a, a DVD documentary. It's the classic album, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Elton John. And it came out in 1973, and I was a kid in 1973, and Elton John was kind of a musical hero of mine, I would say. I mean, uh, I've always liked Elton John. I've always liked his, his songs. I mean, I, I've got a whole backlog of hits from him that I really enjoy. But I've never played this album in its entirety. Uh, this particular version that I picked up was, uh, as I say, it's a special uh, deluxe edition. You can see it's got, like, um, this, that's a the making of yellow brick road dvd uh one of these is still in my car <laughs> the middle uh, disc there so i listened to uh, the whole thing and uh anyway on to the topic here just didn't do that much for me as a whole uh there's some potential there uh it's a great album it's considered one of the great albums and it's not the first great album that i don't care for you know i've had a lot of grief of other albums like, uh, I don't want to name any, Pet Sounds, <coughs> you know, that uh, I think uh, really overblown. But this album to me is much better than Pet Sounds. I mean, 10 times better than Pet Sounds. But uh, the thing is, when I'm listening to the, this in the car, and it's good sound quality, and I'm paying attention, you know, it's not a matter of having to be home and sitting in your room or in your basement or something. I'm listening to like the opening track, you know, Funeral for a Friend and Love Lies Bleeding, and it's pretty good music. I'm enjoying the music, but I can't help thinking to myself, when are we going to get to Benny and the Jets? When are we going to get to Candle in the Wind? You know, songs that I really know from many years. When are we going to get to the title track, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road? These are the ones I really want to hear. And for me, listening to the entire album, all I was really interested in were the, the hits that I know. And this is so often the case with many uh, albums, whether they're great albums like this, uh, very acclaimed classics, you know, uh, or whether they're just, you know, ordinary albums. I'm looking for those big songs. Now, I have to say this because a lot of people, and let's face it, a lot of people aren't going to watch the whole video. They watch a line or two, a minute or two, and then they comment without listening to everything I'm saying. But, uh... Let's not make any mistake about it. I do like commercial hit uh, songs from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and up to the mid-80s. I like commercial pop hits. You know, people think, oh, well, you know, ah, that's just garbage. Anybody could make a pop hit. There's no substance to it or anything. Oh, really? Let's see you try it. I've said this before in past videos. Can you do it? Can you really go out there and write endless top hits from the 50 like the 50s 60s 70s and 80s type that can be uh really accessible and people love and become real uh purchase tunes that get a lot of airplay no, i don't think so it's not as easy as you think but so i i make i make no bones i make no apologies for me liking that stuff i always say that no apologies here no defense but i do want to say People are going to come up and they're going to start saying, you know, this guy, he can't listen to anything unless it's a popular AM bubblegum hit. Oh, really? I'm a big Bob Dylan fan, and I always pick Bob Dylan as an example. Why do I pick Bob Dylan as an example? Because Dylan was no hits artist. Dylan did not just write pop tunes, bubblegum. Not at all. Far from it. And like this particular uh, CD, for example, Bootleg Series Volumes 1 to 3, there's a lot of like... Uh, just general demos and uh, outtakes and recordings here of songs that most of these nobody would know them i, I guarantee you uh 98 of this uh disc the ordinary people out there watching this wouldn't even know when it comes to dylan i'm not just interested in like a rolling stone just like a woman um lay lady lay i'm interested in a lot more songs than that from dylan and uh with dylan it has to do with the words a lot. It has to do with the stories he's telling. It has to do with the poetry and stuff like that. So 
that's why I like Dylan. There's no commercial, there's no mainstream, there's no la di da la di da pop stuff here. So let's just get that straight right off the bat. It's not that I'm incapable or unwilling to listen to stuff. Uh, another example here, I've been getting into Johnny Cash over the last few years, and of course, not all Johnny's stuff is uh, commercial pop, to say the least. And I just, with this case, I like the man's voice, I like the guitar playing, I like the style. And I can listen to almost, it seems, almost anything that Johnny Cash did. Because I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in the sound of Johnny Cash. Uh, we'll get back to Elton John in, in a moment. Of course, Elvis Presley. I'm an Elvis Presley fan. I love Elvis's voice. I love his charisma. And uh, I purposely brought this CD with me to show you, Elvis out in Hollywood, because this, this disc has a lot of Elvis's cheesy movie songs in it, you know? I mean, I can listen to the, the, the movie songs. Not great art. I'm not making a claim that any of them are, any of the cheesy songs are great works of art, uh, music history, not at all. But I'm just saying, even Elvis, I'm willing to delve deep into his catalog because I generally like the sound of his singing and the style, so I can listen to it. You know, that, that's the next thing. There are some artists where, you know, if I like the artist himself, uh, or herself, that would make me want to delve deeper into the catalog, even if there's not real hits there. Such a case as that is Joan Jett, big Joan Jett fan. He has a uh, maxi single of a song called Treadin' Water. Guarantee you that most of you, if not all of you out there, have never heard of Treadin' Water. It's not a hit song, it's just an album track. And uh, I love the song, and I, I like the album it comes from. Another person, I like her style, I like her attitude, I like her singing, so I don't have to hear just hits from her in order to appreciate it. In fact, I was so interested in Joan Jett that I was kind of interested many years ago now into the early 80s, I think this happened. In the early 80s, I started seeking out her band, The Runaways, the first group that she was in, the all-girl rock band. And trust me when I tell you that most of what this band did is in no way top 40 AM fodder. So uh, here again... I'm interested in uh, listening to stuff that's not just hit material. I feel I have to say that. One last example here. Uh, I talk about this artist a lot. You know who it is. It's a new, newer artist, L. King. And uh, this is her latest album. came out last year, 2018. That's right. What do you know? Mr. Mayo listens to some music that's not from the past, listens to present music. Why do I like her? I like the first album. I picked up her first album, Love Stuff. Uh, the whole thing was solid all the way through. I like her songwriting technique. I like her style. I like what she's saying in her lyrics a lot of time. And I love her voice. She's got this really bluesy, countryish, rock and roll voice. I love this woman's stuff. I'll buy her next album. I'll track her down. Listen to the, I've listened to this whole album all the way through. Multiple times. And that leads me to my final point. Um, I was discussing this Elton John phenomenon with uh, some people on a live chat that I had last night. And inevitably, they'll say, well, you know, you can't just judge an album listening to it the first time. You have to listen to an album over and over, multiple times. And folks, please write this down, laminate it, put it in your wallet. I agree. An album really to really stand out, you have to listen to it over and over again. There's some movies out there, motion pictures, that you have to watch many times before you really get it. So I get that. Uh, but here's the thing, while I could see there's a lot of potential on here, as a matter of fact, I like the song right off the bat called Sweet Painted Lady, which is not really a, you know, a big hit or anything, I don't think it's a well-known track, and I'm sure if I played this again and 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 again, this would become a real favorite, sometimes you have to hear it a lot, I get it, uh, but then I come back to my old favorite, uh, subject, about how much time do we have? You know what I mean? Uh, I had a guy in the chat tell me last night, uh, geez, Joe, you're not at death's door, you know? What are you talking about like you have limited time? Well, you know, I'm in my 50s, and I figure at best, you know, if I, if, if you live, you know, your best life and you, you go as long as you can, uh, I, I expect, what do I got, 25 years, maybe 30? I mean, you know, that's not a hell of a lot of time. Uh, 20, 25, 30 years. And that's best case scenario. That's if you make it. You know, why do I want to, like, listen to this over and over and over and over again to really let it grab me uh, if it doesn't? When it comes to Elton John, 
I said at the beginning of this video, I really like Elton John. I mean, he's got so many hits that I love. But I've really thought about it, and uh, there's a lot of albums people really recommend. Captain Fantastic, uh, Mad Men, Across the Water. There's all kinds of titles of albums by Elton John that I hear mentioned. But uh, after all is said and done, for me, I'm really happy with Elton John's big hits. I really am. You know, he's got at least three CD collections that are really top-notch. Uh, Elton John's Greatest Hits 1, Elton John's Greatest Hits 2, there's even one Elton John's Greatest Hits 3, which take us into the 1980s. And for me, with Elton John, I'm happy listening to the really big, big songs I love that I grew up with. Uh, songs ranging from, say, Your Song from the early days, all the way up to, say, the 80s, listening to Sad Songs Say So Much and I'm Still Standing. And that's it. I don't have a real desire to play this. Now, I'm not going to I've decided I'm going to hold on to this. I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm not going to sell it or trade it or anything. I'm going to keep this in my collection because, in all fairness, I think there's enough here, enough sounds here that I enjoyed, and I do like the sound of Elton John singing and piano playing and stuff, that I think that I will put this on again and give it another sh a fair shake at some point. But my whole point, folks, is, again, how many times do you have to listen to something? Uh, I have, and I'm sure some of you out there have, uh, records... CDs, in my case even movies, I have DVDs, Blu-rays, I have movies and music that I have not yet heard, that I've had for 20 years. Believe me folks, 10 years, 20 years go by just like that and uh, I think you have to kind of try to pick and choose your own poison. You got to say, well, what do I want to spend my time with? What do I want to enjoy in whatever time I have? You know, um, I know people, look, this is not supposed to be a depressing, you know, life's coming to an end. Look, I, I, I expect to be here uh, a long time. And uh, the thing is, no matter how you slice it, the fact is you have lived more years behind you than you have left in front of you. And looking at some of the uh, items that are on my shelves that I haven't bothered with, I just don't see the point a lot of times in just spending that time with stuff you're not really that interested in. If I play Goodbye Yellow Brick Road again, I, I'll, I'll give it another listen. Um, this album begs to be listened to. I said earlier that I didn't like Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys. We all know, people who watch my channel know I do not like that. I like three songs on it, and that's it. Guess which ones? The hits. Uh, but I played that record at least three times. I've played Pet Sounds with an open mind at least three times now. It doesn't grab me. I'm done. I, I don't see wasting more time on that for me personally. This one, much better than Pet Sounds for me, but uh, needs some more listens, but I think I made my point. Everyone, I await your comments. Take care.